Welcome to Disciple Makers Broadcast. And boy, do we have a lineup for you today. I want you to know that today your spirit is going to be edified. Did you know that sometimes we are just looking for a word from the Lord that will just impact us and change our lives and help us to go from glory to glory to glory. I believe this word that is going to be shared with you today is such a word. I am on the set today in Orange Park, Florida, beautiful Orange Park, Florida at the Historia Hotel. And oh my goodness, it is just a lovely setting and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So I'm so happy that you joined us. I have with me tonight, James Kelly. And James is a powerful soldier for Christ. You know, Jesus said to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. There are soldiers out there that has taken that mandate very seriously. And I have one such as James in the studio today. Welcome, James. Thank How are you, you today, Thank brother? You. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Oh, I'm Praise so Jesus. happy that we, you're joining me today. And I just know we are just going to have a fabulous time just talking with each other. Amen. Would you tell the, our studio audience a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, my name is James Kelly. I was born, raised here in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, back in uh, July of 1983, I believe it was, while I was um, with some of my friends and one of my closest friends, he, um, uh, at the time, you know, God was just kind of, kind of dealing with me. You know, I was just curious mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, uh, the Lord, you know, religion and all those things. And a friend well, of mine. Well, did you come from a religious background? Oh or? yeah, 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 yeah. You know, just brought up and you know, uh, various denominations and, you know, so-called, you know, uh, buildings that they call the churches today. Uh-huh. You know, uh, yeah, um, um, my family uh, was raised, you know, Baptist mostly. Most of Baptist. You know, and um, I just came up in that atmosphere until I got, well, I think about 21. I was about 21 years old um, when the Lord began to deal with me. And Was uh, there something significant going on in your life that cause you to start to seek God or seek religion in a more profound way? Well, yes, there were uh, another friend of mine, you know, he, you know, he had a, a reputation as a man that was uh, a preacher. Okay. And I was just always curious about him, you know, and I finally met this man and he began to, uh, you know, just share, you know, some of God's word with me and, and we became uh, somewhat very close friends, you know, I just started finding myself often with this man, uh, praying with him, talking with him about the Lord, and he led me into uh, the Baptist... Uh, um, Baptism of the Spirit? Well, the not spirit? the Spirit, but uh, the, the Baptist... Um, Water Baptism? No, 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 not Baptism, but the Baptist denomination. Okay. You know, he led, okay. yeah, he led me there, and um, I was, um, you know, in that for a while, and learning various man-made you know, doctrines and traditions mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. that stuff, you know. And um, the Lord sent one profound, another man of God, you know, and he told me, he said, James, you know, he said, you need Jesus, wow. you know. And so at that time, you know, I was just filled with religion and church entity and just, I couldn't hardly comprehend, you know, he was saying, James, you need Jesus. But I thought that while I was in the system, you know, learning the uh, traditions of men and mm -hmm. and the accepting Christ mentality. You know, I thought I was there, uh -huh. but when he began to explain to me about the person, you know, the character, you know, of Jesus, you know, that really got my attention. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because when I examine, you know how Paul speaks in Corinthians about examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. I understand. You know, yes, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's what I begin to do. Now, now, how was this adding up for you in terms of the tradition of men and all the religion and the re religious practices that you were learning versus actually checking yourself against this Jesus that your friend had now introduced you to? Well, it was, it was a struggle. You know, it was a, um, 
it was a struggle because what I thought I had, I didn't have. You know, I had. What do you mean by that? What, what I mean by that, at, at that time, you know, I didn't have Jesus like I thought I did. You know, um, his his person, his character, you know, um, I was not baptized in the anointing of the Holy Spirit at that time. You know, it was mm -hmm. just all churchanity, uh, uh, you know, Sunday school and... Let and me ask you something now. As you're going through this process, was there a struggle with trying to do that which is right, all the things you're learning and what you're supposed to do to be righteous, to be... Uh, was there a struggle with trying to find the power to be able to actually perform this righteousness on yeah, your own? It was a tremendous struggle, a tremendous struggle. You know, I, the, the, I was just so confused because of what I was taught coming up mm -hmm. in regards to what this true man of God, I believe, told me when he preached to me Jesus. And what, you did know. You, what, what type of things were you learning well, coming up? Well, before, uh, we, I was, you know, how to, you know, um, just participate in, you know, just Sunday school. Mm -hmm. um, so going you know, to just, church, just going home, to church, going. Yes, you know and that then whole. Go back and do whatever you feel like doing. Pretty much, yeah. You know, just, uh, just, honestly, a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because when I looked at the Word of God and I saw what I was doing, you know, I wasn't. I didn't really. I just, I, I just saw myself being a phony. You know what I'm saying? In regards to looking at what Jesus was saying in the scriptures about being born again, you know, and when people would ask me that, I had no knowledge of really what that meant, mm -hmm. you know, until I really began to search, you know, in the midst of that struggle. Mm -hmm. I began to just humble myself, you know, I began to humble myself, and I began to study a lot, you know, I began to just, just come to Jesus and just ask him, Lord, enlighten me, you know, uh, all in the name of faith, just going in my room, shutting my door behind me, getting on my knees, coming to Jesus and crying out for mercy. Lord, please. At this time, I had a little more knowledge of God's word. And I, and I took what Jesus Christ said very seriously because he declared that he was the truth. Mm -hmm. And I believed that with all my heart. Now, now I have to ask you because I know that you're radical for Christ. Okay. So uh, as you're going again through this process, when that enlightenment finally took its full a full root into your spirit what started to happen at that particular point when uh, you came to really know him and be endowed with his spirit and with his power well when that when that happened I wanted to you know become more mature in the spirit I really craved that you know I, I used to Look at, I think it's uh, Galatians 5. It teaches us about the, fruit the, fruit, the fruits mm -hmm. of the Spirit, mm -hmm. you know. And that's something, you know, because Jesus said that the Holy Spirit was given or sent in his name. Mm -hmm. And all the attributes and the behaviors and characteristics of, of the Holy Spirit is Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what I began to focus on, you know. I, 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 just, I just wanted to be you know, in Christ, operating in the realm of the Spirit, you know, because I had also come to know what was the enemy of the Spirit, which was the, 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 the fruits of the flesh, I you see. know, and how they be at war against each other. Against each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just mentioned about how radical you are. You are out there at the stadium, you're um, in the midst of the people, and, and proclaiming the name of Jesus, passing out, you know, the word of God. Now, how do you go from, be, uh, you know, wanting to become mature to coming to that place in your life? Well, in Acts, Jesus said um, in Acts one eight about us becoming his witnesses. You shall be um, my witnesses when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea. and Judea, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So mm -hmm. I wanted to, I, I wanted to be that. You know, I wanted to be a sincere uh, witness for the Lord because another scripture that really uh, grabbed hold of my heart where Jesus said, let your light so shine before men. Mm -hmm. 
so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. You know? Amen. So yes. So that was a strong motivation. And then... Uh, did, did, just, did you have to give, get, give away anything, get away from any type of things? I did. What did you have to give up? To, I had to, to just, just abandon the system. You know, the, what do you mean, you know, the, abandon the system? Aban I come out we're, from... We're in the world. Yeah, yeah we're in the world, but we, we don't, don't have, have to be, be a, of, the world. of it or a part of it. Uh -huh, you know, when I mean abandon the system, the, the church entity, you mm -hmm. know, I had to just come out. Jesus said in uh, St. John 12, uh, 24, unless a grain of wheat mm -hmm. falls into the earth and dies, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. So I had to die to self, like my self-interest and, and what I wanted, and all that stuff had to be put on the back burner. All that stuff I had to just deny and turn away because Jesus said if anyone wishes to come after him, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and let him follow me. You're talking about crucifying that flesh. The flesh. Oh, my God. Crucifying the flesh, the enemy. You know, I'm serious. That That is so, God will order trials and, and things to crucify that old man, that old nature. You know, and I had such a hard struggle with that, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it just took, you know, uh, a strong word. Some I needed I needed a, a stronger word, you well, know. And, you and, mean, and from the, I, word, I, of God, from the word of God, there was a, there's a scripture in Revelations, the third chapter, where Jesus said, He that overcometh. Hmm. You know, and when I read that, you know, and it's, 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 it's many more promises. I'm so happy you said it, said that. Mm -hmm. He that overcome it. There's so many of us that are so busy playing church, mm -hmm. and we don't realize there is a war going on. It is a war. And it is for he who overcome Come. it. He that overcome it's it. It's not for everybody. It's not, for, but for the... For Everyone's the, invited. Everyone is invited, but he that overcome it shall be clothed in white garments. Mm. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Reading scriptures like that, that gave motivation. That gave strong curiosity and, 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 and just, that's what I wanted, you know, because I was just so being, you know, overcome by my flesh. You mm -hmm. know, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, and I, and I finally was led, you know, by this brother about overcoming. Uh, can, we, can we go to the word for a second? Absolutely, please. Okay. please I just want to just, just touch on just a few uh, over in uh, Revelations uh, 2, uh, three, 3, just some of the things. Now, now, before you go to the scripture, let me okay. ask you this. Okay. Um, now, do you just, once you get this revelation and, and God is working in your life and you realize that you have to abandon the flesh and the, the desires of your heart and submit yourself to God and follow him, now, do you just quit your, your job? Do you quit everything and just start doing the ministry how does that work well, how did you how was your journey well no I, I continue to 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 do my profession you know repair shoes but apart from it um after work you know i would you know uh study you know i would come to jesus you know lord jesus you know this is your word your word is eternal your word is true you know i would i continue to do uh, my normal everyday things in life but mm -hmm. there was a time that you know you just have to steal away unto Jesus Christ you know and that's what I began to do you know I when I would when I would read Matthew about when Jesus said when you pray go into your room and shut your door behind you and pray to your father in secret and your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly mm. see words like this meant so much to me so and i began to practice doing just that you know it's and, benefits in yeah it's it is it is very beneficial you know and uh as you very well know draw near to god and he'll draw nigh and to he you. to draw he will draw nigh to you i believe that i believe that now if you really believe something you're going to act upon us you know let us not become just hearers but doers, doers of, the word. of what the words say Amen. So, you know, um, the word had uh, so much motivation, overcoming, crucifying the flesh, you know, just really getting into faith, 
you know, really getting in, you know, because I was like, Lord God, you know, what is it that pleases thee? How can I serve thee? What, you know, how can I tap into this invisible God, you know? And I found out the key. You know, God what just... What is the key? The key is faith. <laughs> the key is Without faith. Without faith. It is impossible to please him. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he believe. is. Hallelujah. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, okay, I found, okay, faith. I got to get into faith. Got to get into faith. You know, then I had to understand what faith was. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it's like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so all this, you know, I mean, it's it just so much a combination of so many things, you know. And you just have to just, you know, rather than just, you know, being still and you know just step out you you, you got to start somewhere you got to start somewhere you know and that's what the lord um was just dealing with me about coming to him james keep coming you know are you thirsty james you know it was like the the, the lord was are you thirsty then keep coming to me you know i you know the verse uh uh um saint john uh 7 37 where our lord says if any man is thirsty let him come to me and drink mm -hmm. he that believeth on me as the scripture has says from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water there but is salvation in no one else would you say no one else no one else buddha islam none of none of what whatever your name there is only salvation in one did you have a scripture you wanted to share with us tonight? Because uh, I knew you were about to go to the scripture. Yes. Uh, one, I tell you, Marilyn, uh, I tell you, one scripture that continues to humble me mm -hmm. every time you know I read it, it just, neither is there salvation. Acts 4.12, it carries so much weight, sister, so much weight. You know, it clearly, it clearly defines that there is salvation in no one else, you know. Um, but people it, seek salvation everywhere except in Christ. In medicine, cabinet. Yeah. Just it's, about everywhere. The doctor, money. If they would, if they would just, just believe the gospel, if they would just begin to just get that Bible and begin to inquire God earnestly you know you know Lord God you know you know that you're, you're talking to the people right now why don't okay. you look into the camera and okay. encourage someone tonight and tell them about this God that you found and how they can find salvation what I would say to anyone who is really really you really want the living God you want the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob come to him really get into faith you know humble yourself in your room in your closet and come to jesus remember the gospel teaches us that no man cometh unto god jesus said in saint john fourteen six, i am the way the truth amen, and the life amen no man cometh unto the father but by me well what does that mean but by me by his character by his humility mm. humbling yourself and coming to God in the very character and person of Jesus Christ. You know, coming to him, calling on his name. Lord Jesus, Amen. I want you. Where are you, Lord? I am, I am open. I, I desire Amen. you. You know, that's, that's where it starts. Faith. And as I was sharing with uh, Sister Marilyn, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And Amen. have patience. Have patience. When you begin to inquire and call on the name of God, you know, be patient. God will send forth the anointing of his spirit, the paraclete, the Amen. helper, to Amen. help you. Amen. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He will send someone to help you. That's where it begins at. That's where it begins at. Coming to Jesus. If you're thirsty, you're hungry, you have a desire to know this, this, this resurrected Lord. Get into faith, humble yourself, and begin to pray. Begin to ask God for things that you believe that you need, for insight, for understanding, and all the things that, 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 that you need to serve, to follow, to worship mm. the Lord. Begin to ask Him for these things and study, study, study.
study. Study God's word. You know, uh, the, the, the scriptures teaches to study, to show thyself, approve unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And God's grace will be with you, and God's grace will be sufficient for you, and you will be pretty much on your way. Amen. Oh, Amen. my God. Now, I know you heard that word. And the word of God also declares that if I be lifted up, yes. I will draw all men yes. unto me, Amen. said God. Amen. So tonight you've heard the word of truth. And you've heard the simplicity of the good news of Jesus Christ. You don't have to fix yourself before you could come to Christ. You don't have to get right. But if you would come to him Amen. in simple humility, yes. just like a little child, yes. he will accept you today. He will wash you up and, and give you the plan that he has had for, for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. James, you said that so well tonight. Thank you. And, and I just pray that, you know, the word of God is quick and it's powerful. Yes. And it's like any two-edged it's sword. It's sharper. It's even sharp. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, I know that word went into the highway and the byway, and Lord it's going to propel them Amen. to come in. To come in. Amen. Amen. You know, tell us a little bit more about how just how long have you been going through the journey of salvation before God sent you out there and you're out there proclaiming the word and ministering to others on street corners and in your workplace? It was, uh, it's been years. Um, it was sometime in 80, 19, I remember it well because when I went out, you know, when I came out of the religious system and began to go out into the world and preach the gospel, I remember that there was a, a, a concert. Mm -hmm. There was a concert, uh, a Michael Jackson concert to be exactly down at the old Gator Bowl and uh, a sister had a had a big old uh, sign where Jesus was hanging off you know all drenched in blood you know and mm -hmm. um, Michael Jackson she had another picture of Michael Jackson on the side of Jesus and he was all splendid looking you know Not glory just glory you know glory. and Jesus was just drenched in blood and it was like Jesus that's that's the one that I want to serve, you know, I want to, to follow him. Something you know. perked your heart yeah, it, it, seeing it, that. It, it really did. It stirred me. It stirred me, you know, because Jesus, as you very well know, bore the sins of many. He bore all of our sins. He was crucified. He was beaten beyond recognition. You know, he suffered and he, he was mocked. He was persecuted. He was, he was pierced, beaten and pierced, you know, mm -hmm. and, he hung, on, and he, he, he hung on the cross. He was placed in a tomb. Three days, three nights later, he came up out of there. God rose him from the dead. And now he is seated at the right hand of the living God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to in a seating, <laughs> Interceding for you and I. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus was the ultimate warrior. Oh, the hallelujah. ultimate warrior. Man he war. endured. He uh, endured. A man of war. You know, we can look in Revelation. We can see how victorious and how awesome this our Lord, our, our, Lord, our Savior, our, Savior, the, our champion. Redeemer, the champion, <laughs> the true champion, the Redeemer, hallelujah. you know, a man. He's awesome. Hallelujah. And he is worthy. So worthy. So worthy. So worthy of our praise and our worship. Oh, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. He is so worthy. So worthy. Why would anyone cast aside so great a salvation? You know why? Because, Tell me. Because they don't know. They don't understand. They, they don't understand. Because if they did, their hearts would be given over to him. Their hearts, you know, it's just like we were all ignorant. Uh, at according, some point in at, our at lives. At some point in our time, in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, but when that truth come in, when the truth of God pierce our soul and our heart, you know, that, that brings about a change. You know, that cuts through all the delusion, all the deception, all of the hypocrisy and the and the phoniness and you know you just get real because the pure in heart shall see his face only the pure in heart only the pure in heart you know through jesus name who have not sold their soul to another have not sold their souls to another you know he died for all not some 
the scripture teaches that Jesus died for all so that we who live should no longer live for ourselves. We shouldn't be living for ourselves, but for him, him who? Jesus, who died and rose again on our behalf. On our behalf, Second Corinthians two fifteen, I believe, and um, that's 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 what it's all about, you know. Just you know, loving the Lord with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. He is worthy of that. He paid an awesome price. He went through. Jesus went through excruciating pain, according to Isaiah fifty three. If you want to read about it, go to Isaiah fifty three, and you will see what Christ endured. You know, but he knew. He knew that he had to. He told and he warned his disciples that he was going to be crucified, that he was going to be mocked by men. He told his followers that. And it came to pass. Amen. And it came to pass. And, and you know, tonight, we're not just calling sinners home, but we're talking to those who are saved as well tonight because there is a great commission. There are many souls whose lives are in the crossroad of decision. And they need someone who is the living word Amen. to come unto them yes. and introduce them to this Christ. No one can introduce someone that they do not know. So God depends on those of us who have a relationship with them to propel them to come in, to speak the truth, to go about demonstrating the power of the gospel Amen. and the truth of the gospel. The truth. The Amen. truth. Amen. Brother, we have only a couple of minutes left. I want to tell you I've truly enjoyed this conversation that we've had tonight. Amen. Just, just speaking about how wonderful our Savior is and how much the world needs oh. Jesus Christ. Oh, so desperate. So I just want you to go ahead and say a final word to our television audience or disciple makers look into the camera again and just say a final word before we leave tonight with all your heart you know come to Jesus by faith you know Jesus said uh, I am the light of the world he that follows me should not walk in darkness but have the light of life I think that's st. John 8 12 focus on Jesus like never before if you would serve Jesus Christ according to St. John 12, 26, Jesus said, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant also be. If any man serve me, the Father will honor him. You want to be honored? Give your heart to Jesus. No matter what people say, no matter what they think, Focus on Jesus Christ. He is the one that died and shed his blood for you personally. So you resort back to the one who proved his love for you and I. Amen. Jesus Christ. And one final word. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23 May the Lord Jesus bless you. May God's grace be upon you. As you set your heart to seek, serve, follow, to seek, serve, follow, worship, and honor the living God by Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining James and I this evening, talking about the Great Commission and Amen. following after Jesus. Amen. The gift of God is eternal life. Yes. Again, go and make disciples. Oh, yes.